president has been clear um, multiple times through myself and others within the administration that we condemn domestic violence in all forms. He has not said it. Why has he not said it? I'm the it? spokesperson for the White House and for the president, and I'm Why saying it to you right now. President Trump publicly defended alleged domestic abuser Rob Porter, but he has not said anything about Porter's ex-wives, the women who say he physically and verbally abused them. His press secretary is unable to come up with a good explanation for his silence. Another reminder that for this administration, always the biggest problem of all lives in the residence of the White House. Olivia Nutzi, Washington correspondent for New York Magazine and MSNBC political analyst Jason Johnson is a politics editor at The Root. Olivia, I'll start with you. Um, they seem caught on this story in a way that they often skate out of others. Right. Why is that? Well, I think when you actually look at the facts, I mean, the first story that the Daily Mail published was pretty bad on its own. The details of that were not something that they should have been defending outwardly as the way that they were anyway. And then I think when it was followed up with those photos that we're now, unfortunately, we're so familiar with, I think even they realized that there was not really a way to try and spin their way out of it. When you would see Sarah Huckabee Sanders at the briefing today trying to spin her way out of it, it is laughable. I mean, it's like Sean Spicer levels of laughable, which she normally does not quite achieve because she is so mundane the way that she talks. It's this monotone. It's, it never quite reaches comedy in how ridiculous it is. And today it did because it was just unbelievable that she thought that she could talk her, she didn't even seem to believe that she could talk her way out of it, but she was trying nevertheless. One, one of the things I found so striking, Jason, is you've got this administration in which you've got huge uh, positions open. I mean, you, the, the, Rachel Brand, who left uh, number three at DOJ, uh, reporting here at NBC News, says part of the reason she left was because she didn't have enough people under her uh, to fill the basic duties of the government, the diplomatic corps at State Department's being hollowed out. And one of the arguments that Don McGahn made for keeping on Rob Porter when he found out this was, look, here's a guy who's a Rhodes Scholar, Ivy League pedigree. Can we really afford to leave him go even if he's done this? Well, here's the problem. These, the, the members of this administration behave as if you can't find a guy out there that doesn't beat women. And I think you can. I think there are plenty of people in Washington, D.C., who haven't beaten their wives, who haven't beaten their girlfriends, who haven't threatened people, who haven't grabbed reporters. The fact that this administration continues to hire people like this and then pretend that they can't find anyone else is an indicator that they are actually comfortable with that attitude, they're comfortable with those beliefs, and they want to continue justifying that behavior. And what makes this so problematic, and I'll honestly, Chris, is it isn't just the president, it isn't just Kelly, but they also bring in women who support these kinds of men. We already have the reports of, of Hope Hicks being part of some, coming out with the communications about Porter. We already hear about Kellyanne Conway. We already hear about the White House spokesperson, Sarah Huckabee Sanders. So the women are just as, as, as convicted in protecting domestic abusers as many of the men. There's also the fact that th this is a White House that runs the country, right? So the president's right. sitting at the top. We know that he likes to take his executive time. He likes to watch Fox and Friends. Right. But when you go through, like, the departures, there's actually been a lot of people yeah. run out by scandal. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the, the head of the CDC was buying and selling tobacco stocks on her first day on the job, and it was, like, maybe a two-hour story, but there's people dying of the flu every day. Right. Like, these jobs, what is broken in that White House in terms of the personnel? Right. Why are they unable to do this? Well, I think you have to ask yourself, you know, the people who are there, why are they there? Right. What compels somebody to work for Donald Trump? What compelled them on the campaign? What compels yeah. them now in the White House? And I think the answer differs, you know, from staffer to staffer. But I think... You know, there are a lot of people who don't, who are professionals and perhaps don't want to be associated with this administration. Uh, people who maybe could do these jobs competently. But if you look at the press shop, I mean, that kind of explains why there is no messaging on this Rob Porter story, why they are in complete conflict with each other, the different officials. There's no cohesive, this is what the White House is saying today. I have no idea what the White House is saying right. today on this because they've said so many conflicting, confusing things and I keep looking at it and thinking like, surely I have missed something. Right. Surely there's something no. that they've said that would explain what's happening I, here, and there, there isn't. There, actually, are, there are all these questions left unanswered. I actually had that, like, am I crazy, am I misremembering <laughs> thought when Kelly was right. like, well, we found out 40 minutes later. I was like, oh, I, right. man, am I really misremembering? I was right. sick last week. Let me. But no, it's not, it's not that. But the, the, the other problem here is, fu fundamentally, Jason, is anyone that works in the White House, works in the administration, has to work for Donald Trump. Right. And right. Al the, ultimately, that tr permanent truth will filter... Who you who is going to work in the administration? 
Well, yeah, first off, you, you have to be somebody who's loyal to Donald Trump, right? And we've, we've talked about this for a week. Now, now, you can be accused of being a pedophile. You can be accused of beating women. You can be accused of, of using your position to enrich yourself and keep a job and then get publicly defended by this administration. But if you got caught writing a critical article or a negative That's tweet true. about awesome. Donald Trump during the campaign, you're gone. So, so clearly, it's only attracting a certain kind of sycophants, uh, a certain kind of men and women who are willing to go along with this authoritarian regime. Uh, many people who are capable and qualified, conservatives who are capable and qualified who want to serve this country, do not want the stench of this administration on them. And I think that's why you're seeing everybody flee like rats yeah. from a ship, and, and it's going to get worse. Yeah. Is it going to get harder or easier for them to attract people? I think it's going to get more difficult. They're just running out of people. You know, people keep leaving and resigning or being fired. They're just, they may just run out of new people to bring in at a certain point. I guess time will tell, but it seems like it'll get more difficult for them over time. Olivia Nutzi and Jason Johnson, thanks for joining me. Nice to have Thank you. Thank you, Thanks, Chris. Uh, that is all in for this evening. The Rachel Matter Show starts right now. Good evening.